So not only am I having to work up here, <laughs> I'm having to work in here. You know what sounds, I mean? Sounds oddly sensual. Welcome to Spencer's, the podcast where it's not just a phase, it's my life, Mom. I've got your picture, I'm coming with you. Um, I'm Sean, that's Haley and Jordan, who are the actual Spencer's. Oh, I love your voice. Thanks. So Thank good. You. Dude, that oh, was my, such a good song. My Google heard me and was like, what did you say? All right, it's just the girlies again today with our honorary girly. Sean Yu, <laughs> who learned a new word. We'll get into it. Hudge, vudge. <laughs> um, a couple <laughs> housekeeping things right on top. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch us and not only listen to us, but also watch us talk about basketball. And rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks. We love you. Harry, were we going to do a game for a rate and review? Did you think of any? I didn't think of any. A game? Like, if you leave us... I thought of a, an interesting one. Okay. It's a little complicated. Okay. Of course. <laughs> if somebody repl- rates and reviews the Spencer's podcast and gives it a five stars, and in their review works in the name of a basketball player, you guys will do on the air that basketball player's daily horoscope mm. and predict predict whether or not um, I love you know, they're it. have a good game, all that stuff. That's Ooh. a good one. Okay, Jordan, not, can you, not too sorry. complicated. Do you remind do you mind redoing that and adding that in? Oh, okay. Um so it's <laughs> we could also just leave me what I just I said. I think here. that's fine. I thought that's what we were gonna do. <laughs> oh, okay. And our reaction to it. I liked our reaction. Ooh, okay, yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, the word that Sean learned. Will you try it again, Sean? Hudge vudge. Yeah, he's trying to say what's up in Hungarian. <laughs> trying? I thought I. I thought I nailed I that. I thought it's pretty good. Just from me hearing it for the first time, like thirty seconds ago. Let's hear yeah, it again. It is, <clears throat> from it's a really good ex- for your absolutely first expert. try. Yeah, let's hear. It. <laughs> we might have lost it. What? I was gonna say, let's hear it, Haley. Let's hear the real. Hunch, vaj. Oh, v- oh, vaj, vaj, vaj. vaj. And then you on the gh, you or the gy, you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Vaj. <laughs> Saying that word Gosh. is making my lips do weird things. I feel like that's the, Hungarian. Is your tongue the, and lips doing weird things and being under an alt right regime? <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of dudes picking up Hungarian in the next few weeks <laughs> <laughs> and eating paprikash. <laughs> that's Hungarian goulash. for you. Love goulash. Well, do you guys want to do rookies first, or you want to do um, our other segment, which we're calling "The Vibes Are Off." God, they're off. They are off, but I think so. we should continue with part from part one. We were we gave our rookies. We should kind of go into it with our one more w- rookie, a round of rookies for everyone. Okay, agreed. Sean, do you want to go first? Sure. I, I believe the task was to do uh, less popular indie rookies, and as someone who is very indie uh, myself. Um, this is just right up my alley. You know, I just love the indie art culture and all of that. And I think there's a long history of indie rookies in the NBA. My indie rookie, I'm going to give two. Um, first one is Alperin Sengun, the Rockets Turkish uh, just big boy who uh, is an exceptional basketball player and – I wish he was getting more minutes because his per 36 numbers are um, legendary, like really, really like doing exceptional things in the small amount of minutes that he's doing it. And he plays a really like low to the ground game. He has these old school like YMCA big man moves where he'll fake and and do a lot of up and unders. Just love his whole energy. Um, Love his whole vibe. The vibes are not off for Al P. Um, And... He's just great. I just wish he got 40 minutes a game instead of the the 20 he's doing. And Steven Silas recently said that um, 
like he's like just from an eye test you can tell christian wood and and sangoon don't play well together so that's why he's not getting these minutes and i'm like just just trade christian wood then you know what are we doing here (laughs) trade everybody that was was exactly where we left off last time it's just interesting because with with for the rockets it's like does it matter if they're playing well or is it does it just matter if the young guys are playing you would assume mm. that, but I feel like it's it, there. It's just the whole thing of like fitting different rotations and blah blah blah. And I'm like, I don't know why he's not experimenting. I I, I don't know why he's like willing to fail. And I think maybe it's because you know the fear of job security, um, which is you know extremely relatable. But maybe maybe that's it. I just don't get it. I just don't get why he's like just playing rookies. And letting them work their way out with these veteran players or people who've been around the league for a while, it it, it just doesn't make sense to me. When a and front office vet- decides to tank, the coach <laughs> knows he's the first to go. I know, right? I know. He automatically knows. And for the vet players too, like they don't, they're not seeing themselves there long term, so they also just want to play. Like the fit doesn't matter to them either. <laughs> right? They just want to go out, like hype up their stats so that they're they're better on the trade market, and you know. Maybe that's why. Maybe Christian Wood took Steven Silas aside. Like, hey, man, I'm not playing well with this guy next to me. I know he's the future, the one of the futures of the franchise. Just let me get my stats up before you trade me to Miami. You know, maybe that's what he asked for Steven Silas. And Steven Silas is a great dude, so maybe he obliged. But yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. Like his his minutes total is, for the last like I don't know, like seven games is all under 20 minutes, except for the game against the Spurs, which we lost because we were getting blown out. But yeah, everything's like under 20 minutes. I'm like, that's unacceptable for someone so young who's shown incredible signs of a really good basketball player. Jordan, you know, like you, you, you need like space and time to get Mm -hmm. into your rhythm in any, in any game in 14 minutes. I don't, I don't think that allows for any player to do that. Totally, totally. Because I think that's what is happening right now with the Warriors and Clay. Like they had to switch up his rotation because he's like, I can't get a groove in three minutes in, three minutes out, 10 minutes in. Like you aren't able to stay warm. You aren't able to get warm quickly. So especially as a rookie, when this is your first introduction to the league, you are trying to get those rhythms and try to see where you fit. And it just seems like the Rockets organization, they're all working against each other. If everyone just knows and calls it what it is, <laughs> then everyone can work together. The rookies can get playing time. Then coach can be like, hey, say my job. And then the vets can pat their stats for the trade. They just need to work together. That's what I'm sensing. The, the vibes are off. The, vi- the, <laughs> the vibes are off. And the whole Have there organization. Been rumors <laughs> of, uh, are they shopping Christian Wood? Uh, I was... I saw a recent post that they're they want to hold on to him, but I, I saw another rumor that the Heat really are hoping to get Christian Wood. Yeah, that's a very and, interesting fit. Yeah, that is. That'd be great. I think he I think he provides value to a lot of teams. This is me selling someone who I don't <laughs> want on the team. Even though I you know, Christian Wood's a great player. I just like is he a winning basketball player? You know, that's the verdict is out. So hopefully he goes to a winning team and can prove Are the Rockets Uh, a winning team? (laughs) Absolutely not. That's why, you know, he should go to a winning team and and let the rookies thrive. Yeah. (laughs) Go thrive somewhere else. I like that (laughs) storyline. Yeah. Well, who's your other rookie? You said you had a second. Oh, for me, the other indie rookie, um, Quentin Grimes on the Knicks, who has had a roller coaster ride of a season where – um, Nick fans love him and then they hate him, um, which is just Nick culture, uh, which is really toxic. But he is great on TikTok and he's a great uh, user of the internet. And so that's why he's on this list because he's kind of under the radar, but his, I think his TikTok's under the radar. So go check out Quentin Grimes' TikTok and, um, you know, watch him do dances in the locker room or stuff. It's it's great. I just love the, you know, the we're getting a different view of the NBA from all these young people, young players who are just showing the league through the eyes of TikToks and like, you know, the classic, like 
uh, upbeat song, and it's like the voiceover, a day in the life of an NBA player. And it's like, first, I get my espresso in the morning. Then I get ready for practice. Then I have, and it's like, it's like, yeah, this is like what people do with their like normal, regular ass jobs. And Quentin Grimes is doing this, and he's a fucking NBA player. I just love that like kind of like <laughs> reveal of life. The Hawks I wanted was... him in the Cam Reddish trade. Did you guys know that? Oh, and Tibbs was like. Absolutely not. Which makes yeah. sense because he's a Tibbs player. He's like a yeah. big hustle guy. Good wing defense. Um, gotta love, gotta love players that Thibs loves. <laughs> Is it's it Thibs? Like, or are you just saying that to be funny? I'm just saying that it's it's oh. Tibbs, right? Yeah. Okay. But, but I heard someone else say that the other day, and I was like, I thought for eight years of my life that it was, it was Tibbs. 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 Um, that's like when I found Fizz. out it was not Roberson, it's Andre Roberson. Yeah. Oh. So I'm like, wow, I'm really sorry. I've been pronouncing it how it is traditionally pronounced for It's not William Defoe, it's Willem, you know. <laughs> um, sorry, Sean, can random. you connect <laughs> Grimes <laughs> Quentin Grimes to Grimes in five people or less? Jeez Louise. Uh like, do they have to have a relationship or can it be kind of a little bit more abstract? This is the way I think that you would do it. So this it, to display it's abstract. Grimes was once represented by Rock Nation. I'm not sure if she Ooh. still is. Rock Nation is Jay-Z's company. Jay-Z mm. once owned some of the Nets. But yes. then you've got to work from the Nets. I, I would have gone uh, Grimes is married to Elon Musk. Kevin O'Connor loves Elon Musk. <laughs> Kevin O'Connor covers the NBA. The NBA where Quentin Grimes plays in. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Also, putting Kevin O'Connor on blast for loving Elon Musk. You should never love a billionaire. <laughs> in any situation. Rule number one. <laughs> Rule number one. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'd, have to, I'd have to agree with that. Um... <laughs> Just taking stray shots. <laughs> no, that's Talk funny you said grass. that, Haley, because I was watching the Knicks and I couldn't stop thinking about what you told us about how Grimes, how she got her name. And that's what I was thinking about the whole time I was watching Tell Sean. Grimes play basketball. Well, Haley told us it was because she had a MySpace page and on MySpace, you had to pick a genre of music and she picked Grime three times and that's why she is a plural grimes didn't you say this on the pod when i was on it last week or i remember someone told me Did this I? story maybe it was you again i but think i, I told remember the story, story because vividly. i found this out two weeks ago and i literally told like five people <laughs> <laughs> every time i get a new fact that's what i do Haley like sounded like a shams blast <laughs> yeah. of like breaking i just found out why grimes is named grimes you're never gonna believe this <laughs> Um, yeah, when I was going through my nature documentary phase, <laughs> there were a lot of PSAs. <laughs> that phase hasn't ended, right? That, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> What's that, like, TikTok? It's not a phase, it's a lifestyle. And then he sings that, like, all-time low song. Sorry. Dude, all-time low, what a throwback. That's I've got one... your picture, I'm coming with you. You probably can't clear that, huh? Sorry, Harry. Can't clear that. Apologies. Paper the copyright, so that much was like it. it. <laughs> All Time Low is the only band that was left off of that throwback concert. I know. I can't think of what that was called. Did you see that thing, Jordan, where it was, it was like, like all um, these old bands or bands from we our are young, youth? We Are Young or something. I don't know. There was Wait, like was Paramore on there. On yes. I think they were. The main. I, yeah, so many. Paramore is great. It's a great band. <sighs> so good. So good. Yeah. Shout out, shout out and they're making band. music again. Yeah, I gotta wa- I'm going to make a note. Listen to Paramore today. Listen. <laughs> there was a stretch where my only, it, this is non India V, but my only, my, like, top iTunes was Paramore, All Time Low, and, like, Mayday Parade or, like, Motion City Soundtrack. Oh. So, so that emo. Is such a specific Motion time. <laughs> In our youth. Dude. Just like, P- oh. Pudge, budge to all my emo boys out there. <laughs> Sean, do the bangs. <laughs> I, I got a haircut recently. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> we I guess all makes... went through that. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yours looks okay. so much better than Make mine. Make sure you guys watch this on YouTube because that was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Cut that out. No. Um, that is the snapshot. Where is it called? That's what thumbnail. I used to look like. That's a thumbnail. That's <laughs> literally what I used to look like when I was in my all-time low phase. Yeah, my Still mom didn't let phase. me cut my bangs, so I did the swoop. We all did Ooh, the swoop. Love so the swoop. So it was just like a really thick piece of hair that just went <laughs> right behind my ear with, with bobby my skinny pin. jeans and my vans <sighs> and the polo with yes. the tank top underneath or the polo with the polo underneath mm-hmm. Double yeah. polo. and the layered yeah. tank tops because you can't just wear yeah. one so you have to wear multiple and, and all they're the like colors. past your butt they're pulled yeah. down <laughs> so far yeah that was honestly <laughs> one of the worst looks you know th- oh, Fashion is like recycled and now we're looking around. I'm like, wow, this is like a lot of late nineties going on. That's never ever gonna come back. No. Like they're Don't leaving that not even mm-hmm. ironically, not camp. That's literally never going to come back. We wore tank tops to the ground. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Those are never coming back. Ooh. Never coming back. Whew. I was thinking was in my head this back. whole time how I would connect him and I would go Kyrie from the Nets. Duke, because mm-hmm. in my head, if you're going to connect players, because I played this game before college, you always go Duke mm, beca- or UK, okay. but Duke is an easy one too. Duke to RJ Barrett, current teammates. I don't think that's five actually, mm. though. That's that's six or seven. That's pretty good. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Um, Jordan, so the, yeah, those, are, those are my indie rookies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My indie those are good. Rookie. Those were good. Good job, Sean. Thank you. Yes, um, I'm indie. <laughs> comes natural doing it with yeah. um my indie rookie is on the bulls io dosumu mm. i am obsessed with this player again i feel like the bulls got a steal in the draft with him he was like third round 38th overall their only draft third pick, round. and he <laughs> is like a he's trying to be which i think is appropriate like a clone of DeRozan his mid-range game is amazing and you have this like mentor you're the only rookie he's like absorbing all of it um also it's really cute DeRozan like went to his Illinois Jersey retirement and they were he was like DeRozan does this remind you of your college days he's like yeah it does I'm like oh it's like a friendship just budding in front of our eyes okay I love them but um, also, he's just a hometown kid. He's from Chicago, went to Illinois, get drafted by the Bulls. Everyone loves that story. It's perfect. Um, and I think also right now with his game, he's able to get the opportunity. You know, Caruso is hurt, which we will talk about later, my beloved Caruso. And Lonzo is hurt. And he started the last seven games averaging 14 points. And I know you were talking about TikTok, Sean. I feel like it's the, like, go little rock star. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. so cute. (laughs) I'm obsessed with him. And he's just a rising star. So I'm obsessed with him. I love him. I think the Bulls got a steal. And I can't wait for him to feel. I feel like this opportunity that he's getting right now with playing time is just going to catapult him into next year and the year after into like a solid career he's not gonna win rookie of the year but he is getting really good experience on this bulls team no 100 percent. he his three-point shooting is also i forget what the number is exactly but it's really high Mm -hmm. um and yeah and he's doing it in like an average of not that many minutes although recently he definitely has because like you said he's um starting but yes, it's, it's, also it's, same birthday as my grandma. The reason I know that is when everyone gets drafted, I look through all of their birthdays and their um, horoscopes just to see if anything really stands out. And he was born on the same day as my grandma, January 17th. Horoscope Haley. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that he fell so low because he was like an All-American at Illinois, like one of the best mm-hmm. players in college basketball. But it's one of those things of like, you know, I could just hear like my mom or my grandma saying in the back of my head, like everything happens for a reason. You know, you, you're meant yes. to be where you're meant to be. And it's like, yeah, the, the, he it's so perfect for him to be in Chicago. And I don't think he would have thrived in any other team. And like per chance, spiritually or not, like he 
got playing time, like significant playing time and was like needed. And I, I just think it's so great for his career. And I'm glad that he's thriving. Like he seems like such a good dude. And you mentioned the like budding ro- bromance between him and DeRozan. Like I was like watching a Bulls game and the, one of the like sideline reporters was like, yeah, like DeRozan's taking him under the wings and yeah. wanting to like make him great. And I'm like, God, a shout out to DeRozan for being one of the like most real players in the league and most genuine dudes. And then shout out to Aya who's like getting this great let like you know feedback and and teaching. Like it's just a perfect fit. It really is. I know. I I love that. He's taking him under his wing and it's I the Illinois coach like came up to DeRozan when he, he Io was getting his jersey retired and he's like, "You know the hug and then the arms in and he's like whispering in his ear and he's like just take him under his wing. He's going to follow everything that you do. And Darrell's is like, yeah, I got him. I'm like, what? I start tearing up. So I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I love him. And he's going to skyrocket into great things. Mm. I love this continuation, too, of what DeRozan did in Toronto, just mentor-wise. Mm-hmm. Like, him and Kyle Lowry had to have been the best older brother duo you could have. Um and a lot of young Raptors did extremely well while they were both there. So I don't think that's a coincidence. Um, mine is not indie. Yeah, it's not indie. So I feel kind of bad. My other option's not indie either. I was I mean, just we doing know, it Haley, to you're slight pretty, Harry. You're pretty, ma- you're pretty mainstream. So I don't, it's not a slight. I it's was going to say Kaminga's <laughs> indie just so Harry. <laughs> Just to see Harry's <laughs> expression. Um, but I do think we should talk about Josh Giddy, who is not indie. He was the sixth overall pick. When we were talking last episode about best hair out of this rookie class, I do think we should mm. at least mention and consider him strongly. Um, but beyond that, like that, what? It, it bounces. Yeah, it how does really it does. bounce like that? What is the product? Like, how do, the, does it make sense gravitationally? That mm-hmm. is excellent root health. Mm. to have that kind of volume and bounce he's probably multiple times a week just like bamboo brush do you guys know what i'm talking about just massaging the scalp or Clearly he uses a shampoo that does not have any buildup because that's how your scalp that's how your hair gets weighed down scalp buildup I, I bet if someone like if you get like a reporter you get like a press presser access and you ask him that question i bet knowing like the vibes giddy gives us he's like i don't do anything yeah, I just I barely No, shower. he definitely doesn't do anything. He's yeah. <laughs> I don't even shower. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to just cut you off, but it's yeah, his hair is great. Um youngest player in NBA to get a triple double. So there's a lot of things he's continuing on with the Thunder. Um also he just has what SGA has too, which is like his teammates already trust him. You already get that sense he's gonna set you up. Um after they played the Mavs, which now was a bit ago, Jason Kidd was like, you can see that his teammates cut really hard for him because they know that there's a good possibility he's going to find them. Not only is he looking for them, but he already has the pose to find Poise. Pose might also. No, let's go with poise to find poise. them. Um, and my other favorite thing, let me pull up the exact stat. He's averaging over seven rebounds as a guard, plus the oh. over six assists he averages. The assists are leading the rookie class currently, um, but the last time I checked, the rebounds are second to only Evan Mobley. Josh wow. Big man. Yeah. An actual big all man. around. All around guy. Um, head to toe. So anyway, that is my pick. He's not indie, so I'm sorry. But like Sean said, I am actually kind of mainstream. Like sometimes Sean will send me a band and be like, let's go to this concert. And I'll think it's a joke. What was the one you said the other day? <laughs> I swear you're making up some of those fucking uh, band names. There's I, no I don't way. Remember, but you always say like that's a fake band name. It's not um, real. It's al- he's always like, let's go to the wooden lampshades. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, it gets worse every single time. They're not real. No, you you picking Giddy as your indie rookie is like you like <laughs> five years later being like, you guys hear this bony Ver guy? He's like <laughs> so sick. Like I I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Like I was really gonna do good. Kaminga as as it like as a joke, but then I ended up. I just want to do Josh Giddy. Um, no offense to Kaminga and, and Josh Giddy, great on TikTok. Mm. Is he exceptional on TikTok? Okay, he oh. just did a video on the Buckets YouTube channel rating the best NBA TikTokers and Giddy. Better was plug a, a that a little high. louder. 
Yes. Buckets YouTube boy. channel, <laughs> MBA S tier TikTokers. But Giddy does the Drake audio. Like, don't tell me to breathe, breathe. He does that like nightly on a nightly basis. Um, maybe he just like Drake. I'm going to look it up. You know, the Dra- Drake after like the, the audio of him after the Raptors won. He's like, don't mm. tell me to breathe. Why are you tell me to breathe? Breathe. Oh, okay. I'm I'm butchering it, obviously, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds good. Also, with Giddy, like a family of hoopers. His mom is a hooper. Mm. Dad a hooper. Sister plays basketball. He plays basketball. It's just like I didn't know that. All I hoopers, all around. Yep. I'll Remember that commercial, the Hoopers, hoopers? the State Farm commercial, the Hoopers. There's a family of hoopers. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, we can get into commercials. That's like a very niche window of my expertise. Yeah. Like, we can go on and on about that later. Later. I have a lot of issues with the State Farm um, in particular. I just feel like the continuity is off on a lot of them, but we can talk about that again oh, I have another thoughts time. Too. Oh, my yeah. God. So many thoughts. Another time. Yeah, that's we were, a whole bonus We were episode. thinking about <laughs> recording a happy hour and putting it on YouTube called Under the Spinfluence. So maybe we'll just do that and it'll just be about State now Farm. Now that's a name. <laughs> Let's like, go Harden a since we have a, we have a, a Harden fan in our presence in Sean, who's a Rockets fan, if you haven't, if you don't know that already. Sean, and why I don't still you love James your, Harden. <clears throat> I'm, yeah, I'm sure you, why don't you give your Twitter? I don't think we did that last time. Just at Sean, you, you know where to find me, dude, hood, hood, you know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, James Harden, the vibes are... <laughs> Oh, while well, you guys just you know settle in on that, um, <laughs> why, the the vibes are definitely off with James Harden because I feel like he he signed a lease with his three friends and was like, "This is gonna be great. I'm gonna be living with like two of my best friends. We got this sick house. We have like all these great neighbors. We are landlords, awesome. Blah 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 blah." And then he's like, "Well, the one dude's never there. He never pays rent." He, he only shows up when I make food and is not appreciative. And then the other one is just like too good. And, I, you know, I don't get to spend any quality time with him. It, it's, it's but like, he's also sick a lot. And he's also sick a lot. In this yeah. metaphor. It, it, like he's also just this, hanging out in his in room a lot. Metaphor, he's not coming. <laughs> it's yeah, the roommate not. who has mono in college on a daily <laughs> basis. And you're like, mono again? <laughs> uh, again? Who are you kissing? You know, it's like that's. That's kind of the vibes. But I feel I, – honestly, I feel bad for the man because he started off the season playing really poorly, and I think a lot of the ref rules, the change was a, a big struggle for him and a big adjustment period. But also, like, you saw that it worked last year when the three of them were playing together. It's just yep. they're never playing together. And so right. I remember seeing the thing. It was like um, someone – like I think the, it was on the Buckets Instagram – post not to not to plug it again but they were like it was a quote from Kyrie or James being like well it was I think it was a quote from Kyrie being like well of course he's gonna love playing with us we're gonna help him take the load off and then you see the lineup and it's like James Harden Patty Mills like uh, DeAndre Bembry and yeah. like Nick Claxton you're like he's this is just a, 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 a like a deja vu for James Harden the load is on and yeah, the like load, the load is on, and he's not getting any management. And I feel, I feel terrible for him. And I, he has every right to want to leave. It's not what he was promised. <clears throat> I feel bad for him too. Um, yeah. I'll read the actual report. This is what happened. Jake Fisher from SI said Harden has recently informed several confidants, including former teammates and coaches, of his interest in exploring other opportunities outside of Brooklyn this summer. Um, so there's a lot of words in there. Um, this summer being very important. It's not saying he wants to be traded right away. Several confidants. Here's the thing. I know that James Harden denied it. I know that Steve Nash said that he talked to Harden and he denied it, which like obviously denied. If he went through the media, why would he? He's not going to tell you if he went through the media, but the big thing. Peter denied Jesus. You don't think that James Harden's going to deny Steve Nash. Come on now. Sorry. That's Hi. literally one of those tweets on Twitter. Is like, you guys are playing Wordle. You should be listening to the Lordle. The Lordle. <laughs> <I hate you. laughs> um, there's a. This is never a lie. Like, unless mm-hmm. it's that one guy. I forget what his like big business or I forget what his uh Twitter app was. But like, this is never a lie. If somebody's 
quote unquote leaking something to the media, it means Harden or his agent was like, hey, I need you guys to uh, tell him this. And so he can release it. If you're someone like Jake Fisher, you work at SI, you work at, you know, you're Tim McMahon, you're I always say his last name fast because I don't know how to say it. Um, Brian Windhorst, Woj. These things aren't ever made up. It's because you have an established relationship with the player and with their agents. So they Mm -hmm. know when they shake your hand, like he's getting information from them in exchange for doing this. Which begs the question, if he's not trying to leave right now, then why would he drop this now? Hmm. That I, that's so interesting because I'm sure you guys saw what's going around Twitter. The last press conference where the reporter basically asked Harden about these quote unquote reports. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard. It. There's no reports. Of course, I like New York. Of course, I like it here. And I was like, well, first, that was very cringy. Two, <laughs> it's like it is the timing. Like the trade deadline is happening. Why would he leave before the trade deadline? He's been telling everybody he wants to win a championship. He knows what it's like when all three roommates are there and they're playing work like puzzles together. Like it's great when that happens. So I, I'm with you. I don't know why now. And it doesn't really make sense with where they are in the season and the standings. Like I, I don't get it. And I don't get why he would even want to leave in, in the first place. I don't know where else he would go. I think that's, that's an interesting too. question. Like for this next summer, it seems like he loved Houston for a lot of reasons. And like one, okay. So actually the Jake Fisher thing, he listed a couple of reasons why he was unhappy. One of them was he, he's not loving New York. He felt like he was, what your word did he use? It was so funny. Like a magnate in Houston. Um, <laughs> magnate. Um, yeah. And uh, like, you know, small pond, big fish type thing. So then the Philly rumors, like perhaps um, that's definitely smaller than New York. But I think the other thing uh, that kind of answers the why not question is what Sean was saying Part of Jake's report was that he's very frustrated with Kyrie only playing half the games and mm-hmm. he's not happy with how Steve Nash is handling multiple things, including uh, the fourth quarter and who plays in crunch time, because right now he's kind of going with whoever's been doing well in the game instead of just putting out um, a solid unit. This is why you do this, right? Who among mm-hmm. us has not done this? Like, you know, told someone something to get someone else to change their behavior instead of just changing Going to the person like head on, he's like, hey, can you tell this person to tell this person that I want Kyrie to do more or I'm going to leave next summer because I'm not happy? You know what I mean? But Kyrie's not going to get vaccinated. He's not. No, he's not. He's he's waited this long. There's absolutely no way. Now, what's going to happen in the playoffs? That's when he might go, even if they win. And it's like Mm -hmm. you are barely hanging on. Because KD, um, God bless him, is just not always – he's not Anthony Davis in terms of unreliability in, you know, with health, but he's not someone I would always think is going to – he's not going to play every game in, this, in mm-hmm. the playoffs. He's right. not, by no we fault of that. his own. Mm-hmm. He's just got a long, lanky body. Like, that's just how it goes, you know? Um, things are bound to bend and snap, but I – Maybe we shouldn't say snap. Nice. I'm gonna knock on my table. Um, <laughs> and bend <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's that's why I, I didn't was, like, do that on purpose. Yeah, I thought you did that on purpose. I didn't do that on purpose. Um, <laughs> I, I was thinking Haley? about. I was hesitating to say snap because that just sounded so graphic. And he has Oof. struggled. You know, things have snapped on him before. I think James is seeing the future and understanding that it's gonna be a long, grueling playoffs for James and James alone. Mm-hmm. And that it's going to, again, be another thing on his legacy. Because his thing on his legacy is always like, you can't do it in the playoffs. You can't do it in the playoffs. And this is a James Harden who came back extremely early on a hamstring injury last year just to be a warm body to help KD out. And they took the Bucks to seven. And it's, you know, I don't think people talk about that enough of him literally, you know, risking damage on a hamstring um, to just play in a game. And all he was doing was kind of passing. And he, he did enough to just be somebody but he shouldn't have played right and Mm -hmm. and then you combine that with Kyrie who's just refusing to get the vaccine and being really selfish and and James was a very selfless player in that playoffs and he's like probably seeing of like I'm gonna get Kyrie for every other game in the playoffs and 
There's no flow there. Um, I'm going to be the one to take all the blame because no one's going to blame KD. He's one of the best players in the world. And, you know, objectively, everyone knows that. If KD gets hurt, then it's just on James. And James, I think, just hates the the media narrative that's always around him and knows that it, it's probably going to be more of the same if he doesn't start saying all this stuff ahead of time. I think he's just mm. trying to get ahead of it in a way to protect his image and to make sure that the next team that decides to get him, like, wants him rather than seeing the lasting image of him like struggling in the playoffs you know yeah yeah because also that's the thing like with the playoffs it's not just about winning I'm sure that's extreme that's the reason why he's like I'm still in this obviously I want to win and we have a real chance we have the best chance technically of any team but He has a reputation in the playoffs that just can't be fun, even if he doesn't himself believe it. Like, his reputation in the playoffs is that he's terrible. And then he chokes. And so Mm -hmm. he's, you know, got other people by his side, you know, or he thought he did when he forced the trade. And now he actually does not have those people by his side to overcome this narrative if he needs their help. And to your point, yeah, it's every other game, you know, oh, my God. We're going back to Brooklyn. Kyrie's not going to be with us. Home games are so important in the playoffs. They change everything. That is your chance to swing it or to cement a lead or anything. And home games are actually going to be a weakness for them because Kyrie's not going to be able to play in them. And and Brooklyn's an awful home game environment. There is no real, like, personality to the Brooklyn crowd. It's really boring. It's really quiet, even in the playoffs. So Great floor. Right, it's just they're just playing Metaphor. road games. He's he's basically playing road games throughout the playoffs, and he, it's just it, I, definitely a daunting fear for James. I can tell. And when yeah. it go when it's a home game and it's a game seven must win situation, and then it's again it falls on Harden. If it's great, if they win, then he's a hero. If they lose, it's all his fault. And it's like, well, I didn't have the people that I thought I was going to battle with. And that's just, it's, yeah, it's kind of not fair. All right. I feel you guys have convinced me why this is all happening now. (laughs) I understand. Where were you originally? Where were you originally? What was your like mindset heading in? I was just, I was like, wait, what reports? Who are these confidants? They don't Mm. know. I was just oblivious. (laughs) There was that, I saw the video going around of, of Perkins, Kendrick Perkins being like, I have it on good authority that, and I've heard he's like I heard this directly that James wants out and wants to go to Philly and I'm like okay like what sources does Perk have and then hearing all these other reports I'm like oh my god maybe Perk does have sources because (laughs) haven't you ever told your friend when you want something to get out have you you know you tell your friend who will get it out you know you don't even have to ask them dang I'm thinking who are my confidants well there's confidants this is not this is a confidant who's Freddie's confidant that you don't know about (laughs) yeah let me let me me think about this a little more (laughs) Jordan's rethinking everything you've got confidants and then you've got confident confidants who will leak stuff and then you've got just people who will leak stuff who think they're your confidants yeah close sources but there are there's levels to this yeah okay Okay. Re- real friends, how many of them? <laughs> but he also said former coaches, and so ma- was that's what Jake Fisher said, the former coaches and teammates. I'm like, is that D'Antoni? Because they left things on kind of weird terms. <laughs> Isn't D'Antoni on the staff too? Wasn't he on the net staff for a little? He was, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. The mystery continues. Yeah. Um. The next vibes are off. Um, you guys want to do Grayson Allen or Steph Curry? Oh, my God. If we, if we do Grayson Allen, uh, Jordan or Sean, you're going to have to take us through it because I my face will turn red. <laughs> set a, yeah, yeah, set I, a timer. <laughs> I, I, we could do the Grayson Allen thing and we could keep – it's just, you know, for, for those who aren't familiar, Grayson Allen fouled Alex Caruso um, and it got called a flagrant two. And uh, he was ejected, and then Alex Caruso played throughout the game, but you found out he like fractured his wrist. And then Grayson Allen, or the Bucks, gave an apology, defending Grayson Allen. They didn't actually apologize; they defended Grayson Allen, saying it wasn't a dirty play, um, which is rare for 
you know, a franchise to co- get ahead of the news like that instead of just being ass later on. And then Grayson Allen apologized on his personal Discord um, to an audience of Grayson who, Allen has a personal Discord. He has a Discord. I I can read his apology, and I I've gone through some issues with Bucks fans because they tried to, um, they 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 try to attack me and Concepcion for saying I, I said. Oh, Bucks uh, fans people, are the worst. No offense if you're I a said, Bucks yeah. fan. Like I hope you're the exception, but Bucks fans are. That's the first death threat I ever got. Yeah, no, they're, they're all awful. And that guy and, also, uh, he was like, oh, I hope you get raped. Yeah, Bucks no, Bucks fans suck. So, so yeah. here's Grayson Allen's two, apology two on his on his Discord chat. Um, okay, wait, can we just stop? He has a Discord <laughs> yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. like when Jeremy Renner had an app that was just about Jeremy Renner updates. Whoa, hey, whoa, no. don't hate on the Renner app. Come on now. <laughs> Did you know the other day Harry told me I looked like Jeremy Renner? <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> It was so rude. That's Harry, like don't my look friend. surprised. Yes, you did. I wrote it down because I was like, I don't want to forget this. I think I told me told it, uh, my friend uh, told a girl that he was into that she he she looked like Kathy Griffin, and we were, and then she like ran away and we were like he's like I don't know what I said. He's like what'd you say? He's like she looked like Kathy Griffin. We were like, do you know who Kathy Griffin is? He's like, yeah, I thought it was, and he just thought of the wrong person. I think he meant like Kelly Ripa, um, but she didn't talk to him again. <laughs> Yeah. So oh, here's yeah. here's great here's Grace and Allen's apology. I have it up because we've been discussing him. Um, also to this point, I stood at half court watching till he got up to see if he was okay. Then when I was back by our bench, a teammate made a joke and laughed. I wasn't laughing at the foul. In response to s- the footage of him smirking mm. in the bench, it was in- it was very unfortunate how it played out. I jumped to block it with my left, and as I'm spinning, went to grab the ball with my right. Hard hard a uh, hand. It was a hard not throw him down. It was a really hard fall, and I'm glad he's okay. If I could do the play over again, knowing he'd fall like that, I wouldn't make the play. Like, shut the fuck up, you <laughs> you dirty ass purse player. You, you like who are you lying to? Talking to literally like people who you know love. Concepcion's kept Concepcion got crushed for this, and it's one of the best tweets ever. Is like. I get it if I'm a Bucks fan. I'd probably be defending my player, but it's like saying this is the one murder Ted Bundy didn't do. And it's like, yeah, like this it's guy so has a true. history. It's he has a, a history. history. It's not like this is a one off for his first offense. There's a history here going all the way back to I think college, right? Like he's oh, been to college. Doing this. this happened during two Louisville games. Yeah. Donovan mm, Mitchell personal. is here today despite Grayson Allen. And then they had to be <laughs> teammates. The strength. The, the, and the and inner Bucks strength. fans are out of their minds. They've been. They, I, I just dropped this tweet in the chat. They've been um, sharing pictures of Grayson Allen with his dog, being like, "This is the guy y'all hating on." By the way, is oh the oh my no. god! And, and and shout out to Jason Concepcion who responded to that in a group chat saying, "Shit, Hitler loved dogs." You know, like <laughs> what is loving dogs does not mean you're not a dirty player. Like, yeah, I, the, but these never fans go are hit, so delusional. Never go full Hitler comp. <laughs> I'm calling CPA on that dog, though. Yeah, like maybe the dog's what? a dirty player too. No, that dog's so cute. <sighs> yeah, it's a really cute dog. But Damn, that's yeah, a cute uh, dog. It, it's, it What's is, its uh, name? The whole thing's fascinating. Oh, more interested in his dog than Grayson Allen. Yeah. So also, cute. Don't, don't mess with my Caruso. I was so. Oh. That's the whole thing. Is like Crusoe you're going high. to mess with a universally <laughs> beloved, beloved player. <sighs> yes. He was a we Laker, and people still love him. I got no, replies right. on my tweet, which I deleted. I took the the picture of the Charlottesville riot protest, and I said, Bucks fans defending Grayson Allen. Oh, and people were like, <laughs> I had to delete the tweet, obviously. But people were like, what are you talking about? Alex Crusoe's also white. Like, this isn't. And I was like, first off, oh, no. first off, Alex Crusoe is not as white as you would imagine. I think he is uh, respected <laughs> by many cultures more so than Grayson Allen. Also, like white on white crime no it was a dirty play like i don't know what these these did the it was it was extreme if you haven't seen it i suggest you watch it it's an awful play or just trust us and don't watch it because it is upsetting and i think that the point that bucks fans were making was since he's been in the league he hasn't even gotten a technical foul he has a history of this it's not like he has not made dirty plays in the league you cannot do what he did how long were we mad at um Harry, who was the big who did that in in the Warriors? Closed out too close. 
Which big Zaza? was that? Zaza. That was Zaza. You guys Zaza. had like three, but you had JaVale. Yeah, okay. That was for a long time. Everyone was mad at him too, myself included. Mm. It was dirty. Don't. This is the whole thing. We're, they made a rule out of it. They made a rule yeah. out of it. That is no longer the NBA, right? Like before, no basketball. I just read, <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. And that's all I have to say about that. God, that guy makes me mad. Mm -hmm. um, let's go on to someone who makes me sad. Steph Curry. <laughs> Dark um, odd. On the rundown, Harry, producer Harry, the Warriors fan, said <laughs> that, that Steph Curry's shooting bad on purpose, in parentheses, performance art. <laughs> um, yes. Real so spin in January. Cycle on that news on that news right there. That's yes. Love that. Um, I looked at the January numbers. In January, Steph Curry is shooting 36.5% overall and 29.1% from three. I will just point out real quick, um, that is worse than what Russ is shooting in both departments on the season. No. <laughs> no. I'm just going to say that. I had to rip the Band-Aid off and now I'll put on some rubbing alcohol. Um, I saw this tweet that said his shooting numbers this season look like concert dates. <laughs> oh, God. oh, dang. It's like one for 13, two for five. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> All right. Also, I'm sorry. Harry looks um, so sad right now. It's okay, Harry. He's the best shooter on the planet. He'll get over it. The last technical thing I'll say to, to set up this conversation is that I've looked at a couple of charts, um, those beautiful charts that people do on the Internet, um, and it looks like he's had the most trouble head on above the break, which you could see if you were watching him like that one's pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, which used to be a, an extremely comfortable shot for him. And then also slightly to the right if you're facing the basket, um, which I hadn't picked up so mm. much. Anyway, um, I have a couple theories. Before we get into them, Harry, would you like to say anything? Yeah. Um, two <laughs> things come to mind. One is um, the, which we are going to get to later, the the um, woman on Jeopardy is from Oakland. And she was kind of the star of Oakland for the last month and a half. And mm -hmm. I do think that, you know, if you're Steph, you love the – Oakland community, you want to take a back seat, kind of let Amy do her thing. Um, That's a good theory. One of my theories yeah, yeah. also includes Jeopardy. I'll say it. Different Jeopardy. Okay. Uh, no, my, my actual honest take is I think that he gets so many of his good looks from Draymond. And with him out, it's like it, he just gets the, the, you know, whatever the three open shots a game that he would get from Draymond, he doesn't get. That's fair. And then that he just – is and this is the real like real homer crazy take is that like he's still playing well like that just him getting the two people to go at him and 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 opening up that like little high pick and roll slip screen is like better than a three <laughs> so those are my two uh keep takes. thinking that harry that's if that's what helps <laughs> you sleep i'm with it <laughs> but jordan do you have any um yes I theories agree. or concerns um, my theory is that him and Aisha just launched a new HBO show called About Last Night, which is like this kind of horny couples game night type thing. But it also looks kind of fun. But I think he that was like a little distracting um, for him whenever they were filming it and also just the press leading up to it. So I think right. Aisha... Um, kind of made him do that and release it mid season and it might be a little bit of a distraction. So that's my thing. That makes me uncomfy. Mm, yeah. Certainly. Some people I just don't want to I don't want to think about them having sex. You don't want them to kiss and tell, yeah. Keep it. Uh, I have a theory as well. And I think um I think this is I, I believe in balance. I believe the world's all about balance. And um, I think if you um, do something great, like becoming the all-time leader in threes, um, you 
and then you follow that up by um, going away from your general humble personality and start wearing T-shirts that say your that has your number, and and then you say comments like, "Now I can finally say I'm the best shooter ever," and you do that for like two three weeks after you've done the record. I think the world's gonna balance you out and uh, put you in this slump to bring you back to earth, saying like you're still human mm. um, because. Those t-shirts Harry, are corny as hell. I can see hell. the breath coming out of your yeah. nose. Like, literally. <laughs> Look, those t-shirts were corny. Um, <laughs> and I just, like, Steph's whole brand is being the wholesome, humble guy. Mm. And the the moment he stepped away from that in the, in the midst of doing something remarkable that everyone already knows is remarkable, it's the moment you step away from that, the world's going to bring you back to, your, to earth. And this is what's happening now. So. Uh, yeah, that's, that's completely legitimate. Um, yeah. Both of them are. Um, okay, I have a couple. I like theories. that you just disregard Harry's theory. <laughs> <laughs> I said both. Yeah, as in all three. Yeah, yeah, me and. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Draymond thing actually, I'll take. The, I, have I have Draymond on my list. I had Draymond on my list. Like that actually makes a lot of sense, and that kind of goes into my first, which is just a, a very literal, practical. Steph is tired. He's thirty three. He needs. This is like the most essential time for him to have the teammates that we've deemed necessary for this great warriors existence um he's had to carry two seasons without clay even though clay is you know getting back on mm-hmm. his own time which he absolutely should it's not just about this moment right now where he's having to deal with what do i do um in the midst of draymond not being here while clay is recovering it's also backlogged so there's mm. the years that he had to carry it without clay entirely and then there's also what came before that which is years and years and years of going absolutely the furthest you can in the playoffs playing the most games building a career on that is very exhausting um I do think it all adds up adds up he's also playing the most minutes per game since the 2013-14 season with 34.6 um and not only has he had the personnel shortages this year Again, he's had them his entire career, so he's playing more than ever. This is echoing what LeBron was doing with the Lakers two years ago. There's an argument to just say the entire time, Um, but it is difficult, and you do need people around you who are at a position where they are fully ready to help. Um, They have so many exciting young players to help, but to not really like be his equal. Um, in terms of contribution and without clay you were of course doing more on defense even as clay is building up to everything he used to do but you're also doing way more on offense like you said um harry without draymond that provides like he's having to do a lot more for himself and while he's doing it for himself when clay isn't in or wasn't in like he's also not getting the distraction like he would defend or distract defenders like crazy. I think that's the most practical thing. Number two, seasonal depression. Mm, mm. Relatable. Where are the circus shots? Where's the joy? Wow. We're not wow. getting any of it anymore. Right? Mm. Okay. Mm. Number three. This is the Matt Amadoi Amodio. <laughs> pronounce that wrong ever since i've had covid my brain will just short circuit Uh uh-oh like no it really will i've talked to my sister about this and like she you just forget things and then you blank and then you wake up and it's like that's so raven (laughs) and you're pulled out of the okay the matt amo amo dio matt amo dio theory um, blue. Do you guys I'm watch Jeopardy? Sorry. I did not watch Jeopardy. I'm sorry. Harry, you watch Jeopardy. I watch Jeopardy. You know Matt. Um, okay. So this actually goes back further. There's James Holhauser theory is also that predated um, this, but Matt's is worse. Matt was on a 38 game win streak. Nuts. Like very, very close to being the top player. James also monetarily, he was only on a 33 game win streak, but monetarily was very, very close to breaking some of Ken's records, right? If he just would keep going for a little bit. 
Matt was in last place entering Final Jeopardy. Weird, right? But he's four. I mean, like, that's just the whole thing with, with these players is that you have to understand, like, even with Amy, as Harry was saying, the most recent um, longtime winner who was wildly exited last night. Like, I just, I'm still having trouble coming to terms with it. And I am applying the Matt. Amodio. If you sing it, it's easier. Um, theory to that too, of what happened to her is that you throw it. Um, so Matt was in last place. He was like 4K behind the leader, barely under 4K behind second place. He bets half of his 10K that he has. The math doesn't math. It's not mm. adding up. Like the final bets for what he did and for what James did are just ridiculous. James got his final Jeopardy question. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something Shakespearean. Matt missed his. I could ask anybody on the street the question that he missed. Mm. It was so disappointing. You guys want me to ask it to you? No, I no I'm worried. I, I'm worried I won't get it and be embarrassed. <laughs> no, I will but not get I, it I would totally get it, Haley, if you asked me. So just just know that I would get it. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna read it anyway because I know you guys oh, are, like it's it's honestly ridiculous. You don't have to answer. I'll just give the answer. Okay. Final Jeopardy question that Matt missed. Matt, who won 38 straight games, Nazi Germany annexed this nation and divided it into regions of the Alps and the Don. Oh, I do know this. Whatever. The Allies later divided it into four sectors. Austria. Everybody knows that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. Also, he was so strong in geography and history. And, and, and you know, it, it, it's a credit of, like, maintaining greatness is really difficult. And sometimes people just want a day off. And in Jeopardy is the case. is like you don't get a day off. It's just nonstop. No, you literally have to you have to tape multiple times a day. You're yeah. staying in a hotel. You're away from your family. Who else is playing multiple times a week at the highest level and away from their families? Steph Curry, NBA mm. players, a.k.a. the Jeopardy mm. theory. Steph is tired of it. He got this amazing landmark of being the greatest shooter of all time very technically statistically but also like we all know ac in actuality yeah. he knows that we know and he's tired the jeopardy theory he's throwing it in maybe just till the end he's of the season wow also, since also we go ahead he, like I, I don't think he th he imagined this team being that good and so i think he has he knows he has games that they can lose to then still mm. put it on the playoffs when everything 100%. comes together yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think it's gonna be ironic that like his record-breaking season might be his worst shooting season. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> like when yeah. he breaks the record, he's actually not shooting that great. I don't know. That's gonna be funny if that's how it ends up. This is my question for you guys because I have a thought, but I don't know if I'm just. Um, it's been too many years. Do you think his stroke looks any different? I don't think so. No, I don't. I think ev I still believe every time he shoots it, it's going to go theory. in. Like every time he shoots, it's yeah. a surprise that he misses it, especially at, from the spots that you were saying, Haley, like right past half court, right on the top of the key. It's like, oh, it's it's automatic. So it's just something just a little. It's like a little glitch in the NBA shooting realm. If yeah, the, the stroke's the still perfect, like it's in your legs. Yeah, the shot looks it's normal. In your legs, I think it's also the point you brought up of like we haven't seen a pregame routine video in in God knows how long, and and maybe the the, the, the stroke joy. looks fine, but the joy it's the joy it's not there. Seasonal depression. Mm. Um, Relatable. I didn't notice this until now, but Harry also wrote in the vibes are off. Um, that Amy lost last mm -hmm. night in Jeopardy. Um, Amy Schneider all timer. What a legend. Her run was amazing. Um, she went the furthest that any woman has. Um, yes. She's also a trans woman. So shout out to that. Like this is so iconic in so many ways. But the ability she had to just jump around a board and whether Genius. it was sports, flowers, concrete, 
like oh hi- Greek history. It was she. She knew everything. I watched every night with my uncle. People. Like oh, she, she would, would embarrass, straight up embarrass people. Embarrass people. Like it would be like forty thousand dollars. Yeah, six hundred, yeah. six hundred. <laughs> like, go, is there like highlights savage. of this? Oh yeah, I'll I send think so you on YouTube. Yeah, okay. she's a legend. She's a legend. Um, cool. if like I would go upstairs for a couple of minutes, I would come back downstairs. My uncle would be like, "She's already run away with it." Not even the first commercial break. <laughs> anyway, a last legend. night Jeopardy theory. I knew something was wrong. Yeah, you right don't away. buy it, right? You don't. You don't buy that she lost. Actually, Not like, at all. Yeah. There are two categories. One of them was the Carolinas, right? Yamahalas, easy money. The second one was what else did she miss? Oh, this one that was like book titles and it was mashed up together. So there was a word in the middle that was a blank, and then the first word was a book title that was two words, and the second letter of that was the first letter of the okay lower book. Yeah, something that she should get, you know easily 100 percent. i was like you think i haven't watched every single game of yours but then it started getting like weird like very obvious and again this is in the very very beginning so i was like the vibes are off for example in the carolinas they were like the bird then the state bird of south carolina is this one and the state bird of north carolina is this one and it was in a picture it was a fucking cardinal I know I'm from Kentucky. Everyone knows what a cardinal is. It's a red bird. Silence. Absolute wow. silence. There were uh, like the whole book category. I was like, this is literally so easy. I'm getting every single one of these. Didn't mm. ring into a single one. She was tired. She was tired. And then Final Jeopardy, which is her weakness. I think she calculated this. So she tried to make it look like she didn't throw the game because she got to Final Jeopardy. Everyone knows that's her weakness. She did not get the answer. Um, How much money did she throw up? You're not fooling me, girl. Like, you're not fooling me. Didn't know what a card was. I love this. Anyway, I'm I'm upset, but I'm happy for her. She's a hero. Come on, Spencers, please. Yeah, Yeah, come on, Spencers. Like, literally, she knows so much about basketball. Love that. that would actually be really fun. We should. She we got should almost every basketball card. Yeah, it was amazing. There was a My football category Jeopardy yesterday. My favorite or when the like the nerd nerds don't know sports and it's like oh, the yes. easiest sports questions <laughs> yeah. and it's like yeah those are my favorite this too. player is nicknamed the king and won a championship <laughs> in Cleveland and they're like the nerds are all like Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan Michael Jordan <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, God a, damn it. She was so legendary because she knew, she literally knew this, all the sports questions. Like baseball, there was this one that was like a crazy stat thing and she knew it. There was a football category last night that she got almost all of them in, but she missed, um, she missed a, she missed Johnny Unitas, which personally hurt because of Louisville, mm. Louisville legend. Um, but, and also there's a Tom Brady question that uh, another woman got, but everyone would have got the Tom Brady question. But yeah, that is a great, that's a really special thing when they don't get that or there's like a <laughs> Beyonce category. Like one time yeah. there was a whole Beyonce one. I got every single one of them. And they were like. I, that's my <laughs> favorite is the silence. And then you hear. <laughs> 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 this legendary football player is known as the goat and has won more Super Bowls than anyone. Uh, Ray, I don't know. Ray Lewis. <laughs> Whatever the opposite of Jeopardy is, that's what I would be good at. Trivia, I get so sweaty. I just freeze <laughs> in the moment. It's like, I probably do know it, but spotlight's yeah. on. Whoo, straight out my brain. I can't do it. So it, it actually trivia. makes me nervous to watch Jeopardy because I have secondhand <laughs> embarrassment. So I can't actually watch those shows. So it's the highlight condensed game version of Amy's run. I would love to watch. So I'll be looking that up on YouTube. But yeah, hey, I'll we, send it to you. Should we end it there? The vibes are off, guys. The vibes yeah. Are, off. are you sure the you don't want to talk about Jordan Peterson on Joe Rogan crying about seeing oh someone God. play the guitar? Me and Jordan Absolutely did a not. Jordan Peterson deep dive yesterday and discovered the time that his daughter sent him a bikini pic on Twitter. We learned way what? too much. Way too yeah, much. Yeah, I don't know. You guys are gonna have to Google that. The vibes were too yeah. off. <laughs> too Just off to talk about. <laughs> we will. The, the vibes are off when you're wearing a suit to do the Joe Rogan podcast. 
Yeah. Obje- superficially, and not even again the nitty gritty. You know, why the fuck are you wearing a bow tie <laughs> on on that that dude's podcast? I don't get it. it makes me mad. Um, I was at the it. dentist okay. yesterday, and I was like checking out or whatever, and we were talking. I forget what we were talking about, but someone was like, "Do you go to the I dentist heard- weekly?" <laughs> Actually, I have had some issues. <laughs> sorry, it's a touchy subject. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay, I have Go to the dentist issues. as long as you want. As sorry. Well, my I don't old dentist judge. fucked up. My old dentist messed me up. And so now the new dentist is fixing me. But she's like, there's too much to do in <laughs> one day. I literally almost got locked jaw yesterday. Like, it's so hard for me from all the work they did. But anyway... Um, I was leaving and she was like, oh, I just love that Joe Rogan. I was like, ooh. No. And then the other girl said, yeah, my sons listen to him all the time. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, anyway. And I put my mask like, on. Now I need a new dentist. <laughs> I no, I let her. I love them. I love them. He's got the how Joe many, Rogan How many problem. more teeth do you have than me? Do you go to the dentist this much, you shark? I do have a perfect smile. It's true. Me too. Okay, well, that's our show. <laughs> please, please keep leaving us uh, voicemails. Send us voicemails. We love them about whatever you want, but also not about Joe Rogan, but about what vibes are off in your life. We'd love to talk you through them. 502-874-4453 or send us an email at spinsters at bluewirepods.com. Spencers is hosted by me, Jordan Liggins, and Haley O'Shaughnessy. This episode was produced by Isabel Joycelyn, Harry Krinsky, Alex Ward, Ashley Zhao, and me. Our production coordinator is Devin Shepard, and our executive producers are Peter Moses, John Yells, and Haley. Hey, Haley and Jordan. Um, this is Chantal from San Francisco. Um, so a few episodes back, you actually asked me to call in with any stories about your producer, Harry, since I went to high school with him. Um, hi, Harry. Um, so... Harry was a senior when I was a sophomore. He was like a cool upperclassman, um, although we did have some overlap. Um, but I think the most memorable thing about him from high school was that he would drive to school every day in this like giant bright blue Toyota FJ Cruiser. Um, and everyone in school knew that it was his car to the point where like still to this day, my friends and I will see the car around San Francisco and be like, oh, there goes Harry Krinsky. Um I also do remember him being on the varsity men's basketball team. So if you want to see any, like, evidence of him balling out, um, let me know, and I can probably dust off some yearbooks and see what I can find. Um, all that aside, I want to say I'm a huge fan of your show. Um, thank you all for the, like, the content that you put out. Um, basketball-wise, I'm most looking forward to seeing Clay back out on the court with Stefan Draymond. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot, and go Dubs.